Hey guys, my name is Tarek. I'm a music and adventure photographer based out of Portland, Oregon. In today's video, we're going to be talking about eight Premiere Pro tips that every video editor must know about. These tips will range from beginner to pro levels. The first four will be video editing tips, and the last four will be audio editing tips. So with the hook out of the way, let's add on an audio transition and get this video started. All right, for the first tip, we're going to be discussing the Snap and Timeline tool. Let's dive into Premiere Pro to learn more. As you can see for this example, I have three clips on my timeline. And when I move one over to the left, it's actually kind of difficult to align the clips perfectly. The magnet, aka snap and timeline tool, will help with this. After clicking on the magnet icon, you can see now that black guidelines appear, self-aligning the clips. Do you see how it snaps in place automatically? It makes organizing your video and audio clips so much easier. An alternate way to enable and disable the snap and timeline tool is by simply clicking the S key. To wrap up the first tip, if you need to be more precise with your clip placements and don't need the clips to snap in place, disable the snap and timeline tool with either method to have more editing freedom. Now for tip number two, we're gonna talk about duplicating your clips. Let's say you have a video clip of your friend walking in slow motion on your timeline and you want to duplicate it. You can always click on the clip, hit Command or Control C, select which track you want it to paste to, move your playhead and hit Command or Control V to paste the clip. And that works just fine, but there's a number of steps in that. There's a much easier way to do it. Let's go ahead and delete this second clip here and this time what we'll do is instead of copying and pasting, I'm going to click on the clip and I'm going to hold the option key, Alt key if you're on Windows, and then click and drag the clip to duplicate it. That's how easy it is to duplicate your clip in Premiere Pro. It's also important to note that you can duplicate your audio clips, images, pretty much any clip that's on your timeline. All right, we're picking up speed. For tip number three, we're gonna be discussing how to add a black video to your timeline. And in the next tip, I can show you ways to use that black video. To get started, I have an empty project open, and I'd like to add a black screen onto my timeline. Let's begin by going over to the Projects panel on the left, right or double click anywhere in the empty space, and go to New Item, Black Video. The default settings for my black video work fine for the sake of this video, but you can change the width or height if you'd like. And now we have the black video in the Projects panel. Now simply drag it onto your timeline to add it. You can change the duration of your black video by dragging its end on the timeline. All right, we're gonna be picking up the difficulty now. For tip number four, we're gonna be discussing keyframes. Do you see how the screen is slowly zooming in onto me? That's keyframes. Do you see how this title card appears right in front of me, that's keyframes. Let's start with what a keyframe actually is. My explanation of a keyframe is that it's a point in time where a clip is doing something specific. So let me show you what keyframes look like. First, click on the clip you're looking to add keyframes to and open up effect controls if they're not already open. As you can see in my example clip that you just watched, what I want to do is have both the text and the black video appear at the exact point that I signal for a title card to appear with my hands. Right now, they are off screen towards the bottom. What I need to do first is mark these points in time for both the black video and the text so that I can adjust the position on them later. And how you do this, or how you create a keyframe, is by clicking on this button where it says add remove keyframe for both clips, and it adds those keyframes. This is telling Premiere Pro that at those points in time, both clips are off screen. 
Second, let's find the exact moment where I signal the card to appear. I'm gonna use the arrows on my keyboard to find the precise moment that I'm referring to. And there it is. Now with the playhead aligned with the exact moment that I signal, I will click each clip and add those secondary keyframes just like we did before. Let's drag the playhead back a little bit and see how it looks. Do you see how this title card appears right in front of me? That's keyframes. I love keyframes. For tip number five, we're gonna be discussing... You guys hear that? That like white noise, that humming noise in the background? All right, for tip number five, we're gonna talk about how to remove that so that your audio can sound like this. First thing we need to do is make sure the audio clip is highlighted and then find the effects. Mine are on the right. Type in D noise and simply drag and drop the audio effect onto the audio clip. At this point, you go to the effect controls and locate the D noise effect and click edit. In the effect pop-up that appears, you'll only need to focus on this slider here. If you drag the slider to the right, you'll remove all of the background audio. And if you move it to the left, it sounds like this. For tip number five, we're going to be discussing... You guys hear that? Back to the right, it sounds like this. For tip number five, we're going to be discussing... You guys hear that? I hear my voice is a little bit skewed, so let's go down to 60 and see how that sounds. For tip number five, we're gonna be discussing... You guys hear that? I would maybe take this down a little bit more, but yeah, that's how you remove the background humming noise in your videos. Just make sure not to chop into your voice. All right, for tip number six, we're gonna be discussing how to synchronize your audio from an external mic, like this lavalier mic here, with the mic that's attached to your camera. In this example, I have the audio from the Tascam lavalier microphone that's on my collar and the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus that's connected to the camera. I want the lavalier microphone's audio to be used, not the Rode mics, but I don't want to spend forever eyeballing the two waveforms and playing the tracks over and over again to try to align them. Before I begin, it's important to make sure that all of your assets are on different tracks. Synchronizing the audio will not work if they are on the same track. I'll highlight the two tracks by holding down shift and clicking on both tracks. Right or double click, synchronize. Make sure that audio is selected in the pop-up that appears. Hit okay, and then voila, Premiere Pro does all the work from here. What I'll usually do now if my extra audio isn't unlinked already is right or double click, unlink, and delete. For tip number seven, I'm gonna show you some quick ways to adjust the volume of your clips. To begin, I've added another video to my timeline that has some audio. The quickest way to adjust the volume of your audio is by clicking the audio track and then clicking the G key. In the pop-up, we're just gonna be focusing on the top option. Set Gain to. You can think of gain as just another way of saying volume. Let's select the blue value and change it to a negative number to lower the volume. To increase the gain, enter a positive number instead, but start with a small number so you don't blow your eardrums out. The next way to change your volume is by making sure your audio clip is highlighted on the timeline and going over to Effect Controls. Under Volume, you'll see a level setting that controls the volume. Let's toggle off the blue stopwatch since we're not keyframing the audio. Now you can simply drag the levels value all the way to the left to lower the volume so that there's no sound at all. And of course, you can select the levels value and type a number manually if you want a specific volume. 
I seem to be liking negative 25. My last volume adjustment tip starts with extending your audio track until you see this line going through the middle of it. Now you can drag the line downwards to decrease the volume or drag it upwards to increase the volume. For the final audio tip and the final tip of this video, I'm gonna show you an easy way to add on audio transitions, specifically constant gain like this or exponential fade like that. In the timeline, I have a music track. I've adjusted the gain for it to start at a lower volume, but I want it to seamlessly increase in volume at this point here, instead of a disrupting volume change. First, I will go into my effects, audio transitions, crossfade, constant gain. I will simply drag and drop it so that the effect is covering the ending of the first half of the track and the beginning of the second half of the track. The same will apply with exponential fade. I want the volume to decrease towards the end here. So I will drag the exponential fade effect so that it is affecting both audio tracks. And here's what that sounds like. Wow, that's all eight Premiere Pro tips. If you found this information valuable, please make sure to like this video for the YouTube algorithm for others to find this video as well. Also, please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss videos just like this one that I'll be posting in the future. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.